Zebra is the best multiplication game that I've yet found. How do you introduce it to your class? You introduce it by asking kids who won. Everyone, raise your hand. If you think that black won, keep your hand raised. If you think that white won, drop your hand. Okay, let's see, and you're all wrong. It's a six to six tie. You're looking for emotional engagement. The kids have no idea about the real rules of the game yet. Everyone, raise your hands. If you think black won, keep your hands raised. Otherwise, drop your hands. And here, it's a seven to six win for black. Isn't that obvious? Yeah, you can tell the kids, obvious, right? There's seven in the top row, there's six in the bottom row. Obvious, seven to six win. Okay, let's score this, everyone. Hands raised, everyone hands raised. And if you think that black won, keep your hands raised. And the result is nine to seven for black. Now, at this point, it's time to tell the rules for how you score. But maybe some of your kids already get it. You've got a clump of three, black. You've got another clump of three, black. Multiply them together, three times three is nine. You've got one clump of seven white, so it just scores seven. So that's how you score this. Okay, let's play a mini game with your class. Um, I group a set of five kids together. You five are on the black team. You're against the rest of the class. Again, we're going for a little bit of humor. Having five kids against the rest of the class? That doesn't sound fair. Okay, so one of the kids has chosen to put the black there. Now, you go to the rest of the class. You guys are white. Where do you want to place your first one? Choose a child in that team. They point and they choose there. Choose another child. Again, you're, you're not looking for hands raised at this point. You want all children to be involved. So you're going around and you're getting specific kids to choose. Okay, so next child, go ahead. And a white, yeah, good, good. Okay, next is the black team. Where is the first? There, okay, and the second one, good, okay. And back again to white. Now, I haven't told you all the rules yet, kids. <laughs> so whenever it's your turn, you can choose to place either one of your chips or one of your opponent's chips. So right now, white has placed one, but white, you could choose to place a black. And go ahead, place a black. There, ah, that's, that's interesting. You've, you've connected those two groups of black stones. Okay, now uh, black goes here and black goes there. White's turn. White goes here, white goes there. And we're just gonna finish it off. Black goes there and black goes there. And this is a seven to six win for black. See that? We've got a group, a clump of two white, another clump of three white. So that's two times three is six. And then we've got seven times one is just seven. So that, that is the result of this mini game. Let's play the real game. Now the real game is played on this giant rhombus. Now, let's, let's see. So we start off with, um, at this point we're probably broken up into pairs or into 2v2. I like 2v2 in games. Kids can discuss strategy. So we've got the click class now broken up into uh, groups and go for it. Uh, again, the first team is black. They play a single chip of black or white and then it's the opposing team's turn. Okay, so there's, I'm just gonna go through a sample game. It's now white's turn. White is gonna place twice. Black's turn. Black is gonna place twice. But black decides to place two whites, right? Joining up those groups. Interesting. Okay, it is white's turn. White places two blacks. So if we were to stop the game now, now, we don't stop the game until the entire grid is full. But if we were to stop the game right now, the score is two for black, that's one times two, um, time, and versus four for white. Okay, let's go for black's turn. Black puts two in the corner there, out of the way. Oh, white is trying to connect up those two black pieces. Uh, that's what's happening there. So now it's black's turn. Black is not going to allow that. Black places two white chips. Now it's white's turn. White is gonna place two black chips. So this is gonna continue. Black places two black. White places a black and a white. Black places two white. 
white. What does white do here? Um, now at this point, I think white makes a really smart move. White decides that it's gonna try to hook up that big group on the left with those little two stones. Um, and you can see right now, the score looks massively in favor of black, 36 to 12. But watch what happens. So black, black doesn't really know what to do here, but black decides to place two white ones here. And then the, but look at the score now, 36 to 24. But look at, at white's next move. White does this. And the, the score, look, look at the score. Um, for black, the score at this point was 2 times 9 times 2, which is 36. But once you connect these two, the score is now 2 times 13, only 26. So this was a very good move for white. Okay, white moves here, or, or that was a black move. Um, and then white does that. And I'm just going to go now to the end of the game. That was kind of... Um, that was a, a very, very good move of, of white in the middle of the game. So there we go. It, uh, it is ending at this point. So we have 126. That is 3 times 21 times 2 to 288 for white. 6 times 12 times 4. So there, there you go. That is a game of zebra. Now, not all of your kids are going to be of equal ability. And if you wanted to try handicapping, I'm not necessarily recommending it, but if you wanted to try handicapping, and there's certainly times that you do want to try it, then um, you can just start the game by giving not just one, black just one piece, but black could have two, three, four, or five um, turns at the start. And again, whenever they're, you're placing these, these chips, they can be both white and black. So black might decide that they want to play five white chips at the very start, right in the middle of the board. Um, that's, a, that's a possibility. I'm a board game designer, and about 10 years ago, I was working on a game called Rumor and Spite, which had a lot of similarities with Zebra. Zebra solves it with such beautiful, elegant precision. It solves many of the problems that I was struggling with, with Rumor and Spite. The game uh, struggles with multiplayers, so I think this Zebra is a game just to play with two players. I did experiment playing with multiple players. Um, in this case, I was trying to say that there's two uh, hidden bits of information that no player knows. So those two, those two black pieces, they could be yellow or red or blue and the kids don't know um, I didn't like it so we're we're just going to say that zebra is a two-player game we don't have these chromatically wonderful zebras just a two-player game or a two-team game <laughs>